Hello there. Yesterday, on St George's Day, the Metropolitan Police kettled in English patriots and sent the clear message out to all the people of England that your capital has fallen and you should be ashamed to be English and be ashamed of your flag. London is now a no-go zone for those that love England because the police will never let you celebrate being English. So keep away from the capital to ensure Islamist supporters can safely stake their claim to London every Saturday. I cannot believe what I saw occur in London yesterday. A group of people were obstructed by the Met Police from walking up to Whitehall on St George's Day. Obviously because they were being too openly English. And the police seemed more than eager to let off a bit of steam by eagerly piling into them. And they had already set the scene quite clearly with the following put out on X before the event. We believe those planning to attend include far-right groups and groups linked to football clubs travelling from elsewhere in the UK. Shock horror! Football supporters attending a St George's event. But what the police were trying to do, of course, is nudge people with the vision of football hooligans turning up. And the English are, of course, labelled as far-right as usual. But St George's Day is a national English event, you know. Unlike the pro-Palestine mobs marching through London every week, wearing masks unchallenged, shouting vile, genocidal slogans and many carrying anti-Semitic placards. And no mention of the far left by the Met, where many of the placards carried are labelled with the words the Socialist Workers' Party. For yesterday's event, the Met put no mask orders in place, but it seems not for this particular one. So it seems that being openly English is the new openly Jewish, where waving a Palestine flag is seen as OK, but not the St George's flag. And it only took us a few days to get there, didn't it? Anyway... Why were the St George's Day celebrations limited to only two hours in such a tiny area of London? Here's the instructions. We have been in discussions with the organiser of the Richmond Terrace event over recent days. To prevent disorder and to minimise disruption, we have imposed a number of conditions under the Public Order Act. Anyone participating in the event must remain on Richmond Terrace within the area marked in pink on the map below. The event cannot start before 3pm and must finish by 5pm. So I do have to ask, why were the police deploying officers and setting up the boundary to restrict passage an hour before the event was due to start? Yes, you can see it in the next Twitter video. The event was not due to start for an hour, and the police were already enforcing the cordon, or trying to. The Met kettled them in before the event had even started. Here's the video that the Met had put out on Twitter, and here's what they said at the time. However... I'm afraid you'll have to just do with a screenshot because a certain computer system may have taken a uh, disliking to the video. However, I continue. The event is not due to start for an hour and regrettably officers are already dealing with disorder. There is an area allocated for this event in Richmond Terrace. This group went past it and continued up Whitehall. When officers formed a cordon and asked the group to turn round, they reacted by violently forcing their way through. Mounted officers intervened with horses to restore the cordon. And the horses got there very, very quickly, didn't they? But if this was about 2pm and the event was not due to start until 3pm, then why was the cordon even there at the time? Unless it was designed to elicit a prescribed response, maybe.
What exactly are people who arrive at an event early meant to do? Why can't they go off looking for a coffee or a bite to eat, or to join those who had already gone up the road? Especially if the cordon does not legally exist yet. Surely the point is to enforce a boundary once it's legally in place. Did they do anything like this for the St Patrick's Day parade, for example? And I don't remember any of this at any pro-Palestine marches. You'd think there was a two-tier policing and justice system in place, wouldn't you? I did try a search online and on Twitter for the Met Police guidance on their instructions for St Patrick's Day, but could find nothing. Maybe it's been taken down. As far as I can see, the police basically prevented the free movement in London of those supporting England and St George's Day, which is a national celebration day. By sowing the idea that there will be some bother and then nudging until that bother took place. St George's Day is not a minority interest protest. It is a celebration. It is not a protest march nor a demonstration. It's more like the Jubilee. Although the establishment would rather it did not exist. So the police have now successfully turned St George's Day into a demonstration day possibly making their job even harder next year, something they will now try to ban in future, no doubt. It's almost as if the establishment wants to defile St George's Day and therefore the English. Here's what happened at an anti-Israel event where the police had fireworks shot at them. And once again I had to scale back on the size of this video because if I showed the whole lot it seems it may have uh, triggered the uh, computer system again. I cannot believe you guys are taking this. Not quite the same response, was it? Now I will point out that Sadiq Khan City Hall did hold an official St George's Day event in Trafalgar Square. But they held it on Sunday the 21st of April, when the real event is on the 23rd of April. Now the police wear all sorts of face paintings on certain events and take the knee at others. But with the English, it battens all the way. Had they just let people move around a bit more freely, maybe there wouldn't have been all that bother in the first place. Now we all know that Tommy Robinson was released from court yesterday with no case to answer. And of course none of this is related to that altercation on Richmond Terrace and Whitehall, is it? I could never believe that the Met were hoping to embroil Tommy Robinson into that event, so giving them the opportunity to haul him before the courts again. Could I? Yes, of course his plan was to always attend that event, and on leaving the court he made his plans quite clear, and as I understand it, Tommy was there. But the Met couldn't get him this time, could they? But they'll be biding their time, no doubt. But if they do try to engineer something, it could be a step too far. And they only have a few weeks to do it in, though. Because now that Tommy's London ban is no longer valid, he is free to return on the 1st of June with his march to ban two-tier policing and expose the UK totalitarian state with his new film, Lawfare. And that would never, never do, would it?